When we mention the name InvoCare, it's likely you've never heard of it. And yet, if you ever planned a funeral in Australia, you had 60% chance of using one of their funeral homes without even knowing it. It is the giant mega company that dominates the Australian funeral industry. And they are all about business. In this video, we're going to have a very frank look about who they are, how they operate, the various lawsuits that they've had, and what this all means for you. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel if you learn something new. Now let's talk about InvoCare. Who is InvoCare? InvoCare was founded in 2001 and is headquartered in Sydney, Australia. It owns over 300 funeral homes across Australia, New Zealand and Singapore, including big names like White Lady Funerals, Simplicity Funerals and Value Cremations, as well as hundreds of smaller funeral homes that you probably thought were independent. They also own 15 cemeteries in New South Wales and Queensland and another two in New Zealand, 29 crematoriums, as well as five pet cremation businesses. Unsurprisingly, they're worth billions of dollars and turn over around $476 million a year. And while we're here, does something about their company vision look a little questionable to you? To be entrusted with all lives as a respected pillar of our communities and a leader in our field. Maybe it's just me, but this part, while being very honest, doesn't sit right with me for a variety of reasons. Anyways, moving on. Buying out the little guy. One of InvoCare's biggest and strongest strategies since it emerged in 2001 is to buy up as many small independent funeral homes as it can. And while most of the public aren't aware of this, they don't hide the fact that this is what they're doing. But they are smart about this as an investment strategy. They want the small independent mum and pop run businesses that are entrenched in their local communities. They keep the signs in place and ramp up marketing using the old family name. No one in the community would be the wiser and they don't look any different to them. They still probably had the same staff. They then reduce inefficiencies and introduce economies of scale. They continue to raise prices way above inflation with the public still trusting them thinking that their home is independent and therefore there must be a good reason for these increases. And then they sit back and relax as they're perfectly positioned for spectacular growth in share prices when the baby boomers start dropping off in droves by 2025. Now you might say why would these mum and pop businesses sell out and sell their company? Many of these small businesses are barely surviving by doing one funeral a week. Massive companies can afford to give discounts small businesses can't so people go elsewhere. And these often family run businesses that have been in the family for generations just aren't going to survive and people have to retire and they need money to do that. I mean, have you noticed inflation recently? So you can't really blame these small funeral homes for selling out to the bigger competitor. Principles only get you so far, it doesn't put food on the table. That Four Corners investigation. Most Aussies will know what I mean when I mention that, that Four Corners story. And for those non-Aussies here, let me explain. In 2029, a current affairs program called Four Corners ran a 20 minute story over here called After Death Behind the Scenes of the Australian Funeral Industry. And what it showed was bad. Rubbish being thrown into coffins, bodies were being identified by doctors in car parks, bodies being transported across state lines to be cremated unbeknownst to the families. People were appalled, there was an uproar. Okay, so it's not exactly baby bodies in the attic or bodies lying around the funeral home property. If you know, you know. But when nothing major ever really happens in your country, those who want to get upset about something will cling to anything. Nonetheless, what those funeral staff were doing in that story was highly unprofessional and very disrespectful. And when I looked into it, every funeral home mentioned in that story was one of InvoCare's. No independent homes came up. Now it could be that the journalists just didn't look into independent homes at all or maybe they did and they just didn't find anything. That was never said. They also only focused on New South Wales and Victoria. No surprise there to any Aussies. So while I do think the story was biased in a variety of ways and purposely tried to make the entire industry look bad, it also has to be said that those homes that were found to be doing wrong were part of the InvoCare empire. Choice Rep Maman. Choice is Australia's leading independent consumer advocacy group. They are massive and they do an awesome job and fairly call out companies no matter how big or small whenever it's needed. And InvoCare keeps coming up time and time again. And mostly for its transparency, or rather lack of it. 
For a long time, many of Invocare's homes, not all, but many, didn't give customers an itemized invoice. They just kind of packaged everything together into one price. So you didn't really know what you were paying for, but it was often for stuff that you didn't need or wouldn't have wanted. This became more of a problem as Choice pulled them up again in 2018 for adding a late payment fee into the package and then failing to remove said fee when it was paid on time. Now they really caught the public's anger on this one and since 2020 they have now itemized prices on all their brand's websites. And thankfully since 2020 Choice has not had to mention InvoCare again but they are certainly keeping a close eye on them. We're transparent, look what we did! So it looked like they were going to be transparent by putting prices on their websites, and they did. But then in 2021, they did this. They saw many price comparison websites getting heavy foot traffic, and so they decided to make their own funeral price comparison website that only compared their business's brands. Now that would be fine if they were transparent in saying that's what their website does, but they chose to call it the nondescript funeralplanner.com.au. And it is only when you get to the very, very bottom of the page and look really hard do you see InvoCare's name. Just enough to keep it legal. A reminder. Now I know people will hear all of this and many will jump up and down cursing the funeral industry and all that. But I want you to use your critical thinking skills here, okay? This isn't about the funeral industry. This is about a massive cooperation with a monopoly on an industry using questionable tactics. Is them as a business preying on bereaved families who don't have the time or emotion to research options to make a quick buck unethical? Absolutely. But is a tech giant that profits off terrorism or a retail fashion giant who profits off slave labor any better? No. And they do, and most people use and buy from them every day without a care in the world. But Sam, I hear you cry. They shouldn't be ripping me off when I'm bereaved and emotional. Here's the truth. You may plan a funeral once, maybe twice in your life. You are aware that this is a problem in the industry, so you have plenty of time to research and evaluate your options in advance and make sure you're not getting ripped off. You should also be reminded that not every one of the funeral homes under InvoCare follow these business practices. Many people want to be funeral directors and many go on to do just that. And they certainly don't go into it to make money. You go into it for the passion, not to make bank because there just isn't any on the front line. And they certainly don't go into it to make money for some mega cooperation. So let's not be yelling at those on the front lines, thanks. And many of you will now be thinking, well shit, what other options do we have? So I want to direct you to the Independent Funeral Directors Association of Australia and their website will be in the description. If you don't want to use InvoCare's brands for a funeral you're planning or you want to work in the industry but not under them, this website lists all the independent funeral homes available around the country. So go give them some love. Before we finish up, you should probably be made aware that only yesterday TPG Capital, a US private equity giant, made an almost $2 billion takeover bid on InvoCare. Now they already own 20% of it for quite a while and this 100% takeover bid isn't set in stone yet, but it likely will be very soon. It is highly unlikely to make any of the mentioned points in this video change. In fact, they're probably going to get worse. Now, if it does become a dumpster fire, we will certainly do another video on it. But let's think positively and hope for some real positive change. And with that, go talk death.